Hello everyone, welcome, and thank you for joining us. My name is Lena, and I am one of the mental health consultants with Louisiana's Provider to Provider Consultation Line, better known as PPCL. Before I introduce you to Dr. Waldman, I'd like to tell you a little bit about PPCL. PPCL is a no-cost consultation and education program that aims to help pediatric and perinatal health care providers address their patients' behavioral and mental PPCL's health needs. goal is to build capacity to identify, diagnose, treat, and refer patients with mental health concerns. Consultation includes guidance on screening, diagnosis, treatment, and medication management. This guidance can be for a specific patient or general in nature. We also have a resource specialist available to provide real-time support to providers who are wanting to connect patients to mental health and other community supports. Lastly, we provide education and training to providers in order to build their confidence in addressing mental health issues. Not only does our program offer a variety of trainings, but we also give providers access to clinical materials and so information via our work? website. When a provider has a question, they can call PPCL at 833-721-2881 and speak directly with someone during our regular business hours. Or they can visit our website at ldh.la.gov forward slash PPCL to submit a consult request. One of our licensed mental health professionals will triage the call and respond to questions within the scope of their practice. If the question requires a psychiatrist, then arrangements will be made to connect the provider As you to can the see, psychiatrist. The expertise of our mental health consultation team runs deep. Our psychiatry team includes Dr. Juliana Finelli and Dr. Megan Vincent, who specialize in perinatal mental health. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Daniel Waldman. Dr. Waldman works directly with PPCL as our child and adolescent psychiatrist. Stay tuned at the end of this video for more information about PPCL. Again, thank you for joining us and I'll pass it to Dr. Waldman. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Daniel Waldman. I'm a child psychiatrist and today I'm excited to be talking to you about the ADHD medication guide. Um, so let's get started. The ADHD medication guide is one of these resources that I probably use pretty much every day in clinic and in some way. I think it's super helpful, um, really clinically relevant, really well organized. Um, you can get a hard copy of it if you, and if you prefer like working like that and you're jumping from clinic to clinic, that might be more useful. I just leave it on the desktop of whatever computer I'm working on and reference it. Um, it's like this two-sided laminated piece of paper or two PDFs back to back. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through today and how I use it and why I think it's so helpful. So we'll have the link available, but really easy to remember, www.adhdmedicationguide.com. Um, and this is straight off the guide itself. I wanted to give credit where credit's due. Uh, this. ADHD medication guide was developed by Dr. Andrew Agesman, who's Chief of Developmental and Behavioral Pediatrics at the Stephen and Alexandra Cohen Children's Medical Center of New York, which is part of Northwell Health. There's an email address attached to the guide if you have any questions or comments. And as a disclaimer, the ADHD medication guide and website are not intended to provide personal medical advice. Please consult your medical professional regarding the use of any medication. Um, so let's take a look at it and then we'll get started. So this is it. Um, this is the first side of it. And this side focuses on methylphenidate formulations and has all the keys. And we'll look at a couple of these as we go. But here are the long acting orals, the pro-drug formulations, which are long acting oral as well the long-acting delayed onset oral, and short-acting oral. And finally, the transdermal patches that we have available. The backside of this is amphetamine formulations. So you have the long-acting oral, the amphetamine pro-drug formulations, the amphetamine formulations that are short-acting oral, the amphetamine formulations that are transdermal, and finally, four of our non-stimulants. 
Um, all of the information provided in this is based on FDA guidelines and what the um, drug insert says. So of course, there's sometimes things that we do outside of what's on this that might be super helpful for kids with ADHD, but this is really based on the FDA evidence. So how I use it. The first thing I find it super helpful for is identifying starting doses of various medications. I also think it's super helpful when thinking about dose adjustments and dose titrations, which I'll talk to you guys about. This comes up a lot um, for my kids with ADHD. This may be one of, the, one of the first times they're being asked to take a pill regularly. So um, this allows you to discuss options if pill swallowing is a concern. Um, we'll talk about how those conversations go. And finally, um, I think that's really helpful for dosing comparisons. And there's like, you know, an asterisk there, there's some caveats I want to clue you into, but still um, very helpful. So let's talk about starting dose. I uh, pulled up these, this part of the ADHD Med Guide, just Concerta and Focal and XR. Um, not advocating these medications specifically. I thought it would just be easier to look at um, a small subset of medications. So if you look at the second column, you'll see they give an age range, like six to 12 years for Concerta, and the starting dose is 18 milligrams, which also happens to be the first pill. That's not always the case. Um, 13 to 17, we have starting dose of 18 milligrams, but the range increases before it's for the younger kids, it goes up to 54 milligrams. When we get to the 13 to 17 year olds, up to 72 milligrams. And then for a greater than or equal to 18 years, the starting dose can be 18 or 36. Um, and the range of dose is the same as for the adolescents, 18 to 72 milligrams. Um, for the focal and XR, kind of similar, although they don't break it down into the same categories. So we have a range from six to 17 years. The range is five to 30 milligrams with a starting dose of five milligrams. And then 18 years and up, again, five to 30 milligrams, starting dose of five milligrams. So it doesn't change for focalin. Um, these pill images help you kind of conceptualize a dose titration. So in, for Concerta, you have these steps along the way. Um, where you can go from 18 to 27 to 36 to 54. For focalin, it's multiples of five, so five, 10, 15, and so on. It'll show you the max dose. Um, as far as the dose comparisons, is there, you know, I, I don't think it's fair to say that these are equivalent and um, we can't claim as much, but just the way they're organized does suggest that maybe Concerta has a little bit more flexibility at this lower dose end because there's not a dose of focal and XR you can compare to Concerta 27. It seems to be a slightly bigger jump. Um, and that's not um, super exact, but it's just something to think about. Um, the other thing I think is super helpful is if you look at the, the full page here, you'll be able to look at some of these are tablets and the tablets that um, they, they indicate that you can break them in half if they're scored. Like it's pretty easy to see in this image, this Quillichu, 20 milligrams, 30 milligrams, they're both scored. So theoretically you can break those in half and get pretty close to like half of 20 is 10 in each half. And that's that can be helpful during a dose titration too. Not all tablets are breakable, particularly in the long acting category. So something to, to keep in mind as well and something that's helpful about this medication guide. Okay, this is probably the most um, referenced thing for me because it's just not something I've committed to memory and I find super helpful. I can show it to patients. 
So and this is that pill swallowing piece. So a lot of kids that come to see me have never swallowed a pill or can only small, swallow very small pills and get scared at the idea of swallowing a larger pill. So the first thing is if you actually have this printed out or you have it like real sized on your computer screen, the images on this are designed to be the actual size of the pill. So you can show patients if they wanna know how big the pill is, which comes up a lot, you can actually show them this and say, this is how big it is. Um, and then they can compare it to other pills they've taken before and get a sense of how comfortable they are trying to swallow that pill. Um, so that's something very useful about this. It's instead of having that conversation, well, is it a big pill or a small pill? That can be really subjective. Now you can just show it to them and they can think about their experience in taking pills. Um, the next thing is a lot of kids, the answer to that is no, I'm not gonna be able to swallow that pill. So what options do you have? So of course there's the chewables and the transdermal formulations um, and the liquid formulations to consider, but there are also these capsules. And if you look at the key on the front of, on the first page of this, it has this administration key. So some of these must be swallowed whole, but some of the capsules can be mixed with yogurt, orange juice, or water, can open capsule and sprinkle medication on applesauce, can open capsule and sprinkle medication into water or on applesauce, can open capsule and mix with applesauce or yogurt. Um, so if we look at the Adderall XR, for example, it has this little doodad here, and we look at our reference and you can see that Adderall XR is a capsule that you can be, you can open it and sprinkle it on applesauce. Um, so I, I like just looking at that and advising families as such. Another thing that I, I just wanna draw your attention to while we're looking at this key, um, which I think is helpful to know. And this is something that, you know, this latest medication guide was published June, 2023. So it's almost 100% up to date. One thing that's changed is Vyvanse now transition to generic, but these Gs in the boxes show you specifically if this dose is available in a generic formulation versus a branded form formulation versus exclusively generic, but not a branded formulation. And that can be helpful when navigating um, different insurances and predicting if something's gonna be covered by an insurance, or if you do need to fill out a prior authorization, how easy it might be to get that medication covered. So just another useful thing that um, happens to be lumped with this administration key. The last thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is this issue of dose comparison. And before we delve into this, I just wanna point out exactly what it says on this guide. And it says, please note, medications have been arranged on the ADHD medication guide for ease of display and visual comparison and dosing comparability cannot be assumed. So, you need to use your clinical knowledge and judgment and may need to do some additional research before just jumping to the conclusion that because medications line up on the guide, they are equivalent. But I do think it's useful and they are organized in a way that is helpful, particularly within the specific subcategories. For example, if we're looking at the long acting oral methylphenidate formulations, they are organized in a way so it's fair to compare these doses. Now we can't say for certain that they're equivalent because they have different release mechanisms um, and people's bodies respond differently, but it's a good gauge to know if you're in the ballpark, if you're transitioning from one medicine to another for dosing. So for example, if we're thinking about Concerta and thinking about, well, how does that compare to Focal and XR? and you're looking at this patient on Concerta 36 milligrams, a, a comparison is to say that they're on Focal and XR 10 milligrams, 
Now, how that plays out clinically is another question, but it's, it's a useful starting point for thinking about how to compare these doses. Um, and I think that's super helpful when I'm thinking about targeting doses or starting doses or thinking about tolerability or um, efficacy of a medicine if I'm changing between them, especially when medicines have been in shortage and we've been having to do a lot of that. Okay, well, thanks so much for um, tuning in and I hope that you find this resource helpful in your clinical practice. Want to know more about PPCL? Call us at 833-721-2881 or visit our website at ldh.la.gov forward slash PPCL. You can also scan the QR code to register for our program. Registration takes about one to two minutes to complete. Thanks again for joining us and we hope you have a great day.